For more debates, updates, and bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. The reason that the secular world feels so out of control right now, I mean, just, just yesterday, I'm sure some of you guys saw the CNN did this uh, equality town hall last night, and it was like, you know, everyone has to mention their gender pronouns, and you have to admit that there are more than two genders, and all of these things that we know these conversations are not being had. There are settled science debates that went on for a long time that we know, we know what facts are. And yet we find, because this has now become untethered to anything other than how you feel, uh, that now everything is up for grabs. And that's why it sort of feels like that there's something sort of godless happening here or, or something mm -hmm. like that. Now, trust me, that is a, that is a hard thing for someone like me to say. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as someone that really my, my beliefs really are rooted in the Enlightenment and the Enlightenment thinkers. Um, and this is a real debate amongst people who talk about the Enlightenment. Could they have done it? Could they have reformed religions and, and burst liberalism in a positive way forward without some religious belief behind it? I, I don't know the answer to that exactly. I don't know that we'll ever really know the answer to that. Um, but I would say that the reason I first said that I'm happy to be here with you guys is that in the last year, where now I virtually only get invited to events by conservative groups or you know, libertarian groups for sure, but groups on the right, let's say. But I often get invited to churches. I right. often get invited to places of faith. Now, I know we can go through a litany of political disagreements that we may or may not have, and I absolutely know that everyone in this room would be happy to do that. And there would be nobody fighting, there would be nobody screaming. We could explore those ideas as far as we can. And then we would put it down and, and either agree to disagree or maybe, yeah. maybe we'd move each other one way or another and, and that would be wonderful. Um, and I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't think it's a coincidence that you guys here uh, and that generally believers right now are more tolerant. They are, it's just the reality. The, the people, yeah. <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause. That's, I mean, that really is true. Who, who are the most intolerant people in society right now? It's the people that are constantly telling you how tolerant they are. That's the, that's the irony. It's the people that tell you you're a bunch of racists and bigots and homophobes and the rest of it. And, and that's the real bizarre flip that we have happening in society. And I think that is linked to either, a, however you want to phrase it, either a, a post-Christian world or yeah. a post-Judeo-Christian world or, or a post-modern world, whatever, however you want to define that. I mean, to what extent do you agree with Dave's analysis there of what's going on, especially, I suppose, at that academic level and uh, in terms of the, the, the kind of conversations now that you are and aren't allowed to have almost uh, when it comes to these issues? Uh, I think it's a pretty accurate analysis and that's what I experience out there. I'm always interested in the phrase, God's dead, because it seems to assume he was alive once. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, <laughs> I hear Richard Dawkins kind of saying, which God? And I think that's a question worth addressing because the God that I believe in, that is the God of the Bible, is eternal. And that raises problems for the deadness, doesn't it? Sure. <laughs> there's a sense in which Nietzsche was a very accurate prophet. And what, to my mind, is very important with him was that he could see, where many contemporary atheists cannot see, that if you abolish God, you wipe the ground under any solidity on which you can base a morality, human dignity, freedom, all those values. He saw that connection. And he said, if you get rid of God, you've no right in the end to values. And you notice where the values are real out in our society, they're mostly values that go back to the Judeo-Christian tradition. And I think, therefore, to bring that back into the discussion, I like the idea, and I think it's very important to start where there's something more. There's something outside of us. That's the start, it seems to me, of coming back to something around which society can be organized, because otherwise everything is subjective. And you mentioned postmodern, and it amuses me that so many, but it's sad that so many of these people will tell you, 
as an absolute truth that there is no truth. Now that's just sheer nonsense. <laughs>